All right, well, Roger, uh, let me introduce this uh, recording. The, uh, the topic is Turtle Fire and Pawnee Dream Culture. And I hope that this is uh, going to be the first of a series that we can do and make uh, targeted brief recordings on specific subjects and then put them out for, for people to uh, be able to view on uh, YouTube, on our YouTube channel. So I look forward to hearing what you have for us, and I will turn it over to you. All right, welcome to Bonnie Land. Let's take a little visit to the esoteric side of that realm. There was a man who lived at Wild Licorice Creek in the old Bonnie homeland. He would roll up a handful of mud and a turtle would emerge. And he'd take this little living turtle between his hands and roll it up and it would become mud again. When Bonnie doctors perform their great illusions, they intend and they end at the mastering of mystical knowledge. And in those days, visionary experience once shaped the Bonnie world building. Dreams and visions descended from hidden mechanisms of the cosmic order, descending from celestial realms to define what it meant to be Pawnee, certain truths of tradition and culture. I presume that in Pawnee land today, dreaming can be read in many ways, but we no longer center in our civic order, the magic of dream imagery. The Bonnie dream world has faded, displaced by alternate cultural protocols, thoroughly Americanized. During the decades around 1900, the ancient psychedelic surrealism of dream world building evaporated from the essences of Bonnie identity. And when the Bonnies of that time realized their world was vanishing, tradition keepers took action. They helped to create a vast written literature of oral traditions. They wanted us to see the magic of the inner realms of Pawnee land. In those days, there was a Chawi named Little Chief. He had married Sadie Crazy Horse, my great-great-grandfather's brother's daughter. And in 1905, he was the leading Chawi Reisaru. And one day he related a story, usually told during the Chawi bear dance. A youth named Smoking with the Bear got lost while hunting, and he dreamed of an Ichaz, a turtle covered with mud. Fire came from his mouth and eyes. The Ichaz told him, I am the fireplace of the animal lodges. The youth awakened and he saw in the pond sparks of fire. 
1914, James R. Neary wrote that preparation of the ritual lodge for the annual doctor ceremonial included construction of a special fireplace. The fireplace is cleared down and a large turtle modeled there is head toward the altar. A new fireplace is then made on his back. During the 1850s, a serious rivalry arose between the Skeety Deer Dance Lodge and the Skeety Doctor Lodge. Kind warrior, who, who was the founder of the Deer Dance Lodge, he threatened the Skeety Doctors. He said that if necessary, he would enter their ceremonial earth lodge and he would block the entryway and he would bring to life their turtle fireplace. Mysterious Buffalo Bull or John Buffalo. He was a prominent skeedy ceremonialist and in April 1905, James R. Murray asked him about the dedication of a ceremonial doctor's earth lodge. He said, you see our fireplace. It is the morning star where our sun comes from. It is also the picture of a turtle. Really, it is the morning star. The head of the turtle is towards the east. That is where the gods do their thinking. While in the west, all things are created. The hind end of the turtle is in the west. The four legs are the four world quarter gods upholding the heavens. That's what he said. In Pawnee land, the Ichas is filled with fire. A meditative keeper of celestial magic, obscure intentions. And mysterious Buffalo Bull also told how the great ghost divinity, Baugatua, predicted a meteor shower. One particular star would fall to earth, the shape of a turtle. It will have many colors. And in the year 1833, Stars fell all through the night. They flew around like birds. And several years later, two men found a meteorite, the shape of a turtle. The speedy priests decided to keep it with the morning star bundle. One of the greatest of Skeety priests was Scout roaming the world. About 1905, he related a Skeety cosmogonic narrative. In the story, Morning Star carried Sun as a ball of fire, and he wielded that fire to vanquish a series of obstacles. Then he achieved various tasks, including the bringing of the baby board, which is guarded by turtles. 
in the form of hot fire. Clara Yellowson was the daughter of a skeety doctor. About 1903, she told this story about turtles and childbirth. A young woman ran off with a man, a Kitsaruksu. This scalped man held her captive. When she got pregnant, he brought her a cradleboard. And after her contractions began, she made ready to give birth. And the scalped man stepped to a dark corner of the cavern, promising to summon a midwife. An opening appeared, a large e crawled out of the river to help deliver the baby, and the woman gave birth without pain, and the turtle went back into the water. The surrealism of Bonnie dream culture, mysterious truths, Unexpected juxtapositions, new insights, the inexplicable ethos filled with fire at the edge of our dreaming. Nowadays, dreaming no longer rests at the center of Pawnee culture and identity, but dreaming will always matter in the storytelling of Bonnie Land, because sometimes we must make sense of dreams to make sense of ourselves. And functional surrealism derived from dream and visionary experience long ago helped to shape the communal myth-making of Pawnee Land but history is not a dream. And in 1875, before the Skeety left their ancient homeland, removing to Oklahoma, a Skeety named Lone Chief and several men rode off on a secret errand. They took with them the Morning Star meteorite turtle the turtle long ago foretold by Pau Katua fallen from the stars. And they set this turtle on a high sandy hill in the western part of Nebraska. This turtle foretold in a vision had one more dreamlike journey to make, a symbolic return to the stars. And for us, in hindsight, this final mystical journey of the meteorite turtle marks a symbolic end to the surreal project of dream world building in ancient Pawnee land. And Lone Chief and the Skeety men rode down from that sandy hill and they rode back the wild licorice creek in that fall the pawnee people got on their horses and they rode away to find another future in another pawnee homeland Thank you, Roger. I, I have a couple of questions, if that would be okay. Uh, do, you, do you see turtle uh, imagery or turtle symbology uh, playing a role today? The storytelling in which turtles matter, the storytelling itself deserves to matter today in Bonnie Land. And so that is difficult to measure in these days 
where the turtle imagery was the part of community life. People could attend ceremonies. They could attend storytellings. There were public events in which turtle symbolism mattered. And that's no longer true today. And I guess it could be true someday. But what is also true is that these stories, they represent our heritage, our history. And so when we repeat this information, we're not necessarily suggesting that people should go back and reproduce some of those ceremonies. It's possible to do that. But we are saying we are entitled to make sense of what this means for us today, that our ancestors did these things. They told these stories. It mattered to them to create a record about those days. And so we can look at those records. We can experience those stories. And we can, each of us, make sense of what we think that means. Well, one of the things that I pick up on hearing something like this is... Uh... You know, I'm, I'm aware that storytelling is is still a vital part of how people think about uh, culture today, Pawnee land. But I'm not so sure where uh, the kind of role that dreaming plays now that it may have at, at earlier times. Do you have any thoughts on that? When we look at the detailed, extensive records that the Pawnee elders and priests and community leaders created over a century ago, the things they thought should matter to the future. Then we can see what they made of their own cultural lives. And I think that uh, it has been very impressive to me to see the extent to which dreams, surrealism and storytelling, visionary experiences, these things were clearly at the heart of what they thought of when they imagined themselves as a community, as Pawnees. And so it's not like, you know, dreaming comes up every once in a while. It comes up all the time in the stories. And so when you look at a ceremony, for example, and you see the songs and the stories that explain the songs in some of the ceremonies, a good number of those religious songs that were essential to the performance of the ceremony were derived from dreams of one kind or another. And so dreaming mattered in those days in a way that it does not matter today. And so this is important because we can ask ourselves what their lives consisted of. We can ask ourselves what our lives consist of. And we can compare what has endeared. And we can compare what has changed. And we can ask ourselves what kind of meaning we're willing to make out of that. So just for a, if you have a final thought on how you'd like to wrap this up, um, what would you hope someone listening to this, young person, old person, um, what would you hope they might take away from hearing something like this? I think the more we know about our heritage, our past, previous generations, the cultural truths that were created and passed on 
that we are the heirs of, the more we know about that, the more ways we have of being ourselves and of imagining the future. And so this is about, in my mind, who we are as individuals and who we are as a society. And so I don't really, uh, I'm not trying to say here is my understanding of Pawnee culture. And this is the way it was. I'm saying here are some elements that I think matter to those people. And then we can sit down and ask ourselves what do we think that means. And I think in any given group of Pawnees, you're going to hear a lot of different answers for that. And that's true today. And it was true then to people made all kinds of meanings out of these things, not just here's what it is to be Pawnee. This is what we do. Instead, here are some things that we do as individuals in this world. Here are some things we do that we think matter. And so we want to talk about that and whether or not it matters to the far future. That's not for any of us to ever decide. And so I don't really have any kind of specific intention for, well, here's what Pawnees today should do. Instead, I'm curious to know when you hear this information, when you hear these stories, what does it mean to you right now when you hear them? And as you think about it later, and here's the thing that I think is going on. Bonnie's really want to hear this stuff. Whatever they make of it, we're not really uh, finding public venues in our schools, in our colleges, in our online world. We don't see very much in there about these matters. And so I'm really just saying, here's an opportunity. People can gather around and listen or they can go watch the Super Bowl, or they can do both. And I want to hear, well, what does this mean to you? And I really do want to hear people mull over for themselves. Well, what do I think this means? How do I answer that? And I think this is the kind of conversation that people in Pawnee land should be having and people who do not consider themselves to be a formal part of Bonnie land, they have just as much invested in understanding this material as the rest of us do. They may make something different than I would. And so people beyond Bonnie land, they also are, uh, should be in the position to hear this material and here's why this matters to those people because it's an interesting question to me as a historian how has bonnie land changed the world and i think that one of the things that i've done as a historian is i've argued that Bonnie Land has changed the world in a number of measurable ways that have really mattered and ways that people may not really be aware of at all. But without that, their experience, their understanding, their imagery, what's in their imaginations would be different without Bonnie Land. And so I think we matter, and it matters what we think about this. And 
we need to try to hold conversations like this because I don't know when I went to college, when I went to high school, I didn't hear anybody talking about Pawnee stuff. I had to set all that aside in order to get my degrees. And I don't think we should be content with that if we think that people deserve to have the option to put some thought into these meanings. Well, thank you, Roger, for uh, putting this out there for people to hear. Um, I look forward to hearing more about uh, topics like this in the future. So uh, thank you. Much appreciated. <laughs>